Well, I've been getting a few questions about sanding, basically finished sanding. And because this coffee table is just about finished, I figured that this would be a good time to show you exactly how I'm going to finish sand this piece of furniture. Now, before I get started, I thought it would be good to show you some of the things I did. You might find them interesting and it might be something that you want to do in something that you're building. Now, the first thing I wanted to point out is if you look at the back of the cabinet, you can see that the piece of wood is the same. So it's one piece of wood, it's cut in half, and that makes up the back of the cabinet. And because the grain follows through, that's just a little bit, uh, it's just kind of a nice attention to detail. For the drawer stops, I glued a piece of cherry. And to get, to find out the depth of the drawer stop, I took a cutoff from the same material, held it on the cabinet, and then drew a line. And then I just clamped this piece of cherry at that line. This coffee table is based on the design of a writing desk that I made a few years ago. And that writing desk was put together using dovetail joints on the ends and a sliding dovetail in the center. Now, I didn't have the time to build this with dovetails and the client, uh, it's kind of being built on a budget, both in time and in price. So I screwed the cabinet together and then I filled the screw holes with plugs. When you build a piece of furniture in solid wood, it's important that the grain runs in the same direction. That way the wood can expand and contract together. I used a few Dutchman joints to repair the crack in the top of the coffee table. Now, not only does that repair the crack, but it also adds kind of a nice design element. And if you'd like to know more about the Dutchman joints, how to make them and how to use them, just click on the link right here. Well, now I'm ready to finish sand this piece of furniture. And the first step is to remove any parts that will make the sanding job easier. And in this case, I'm going to remove the legs. I'm going to remove the backs of the cabinet. And of course, I'm going to remove the drawers and sand them separately. I attached the backs with three screws from the bottom. So I'm going to make sure that I mark the inside of the back and also the space where the back is going to go and that will make reassembling the cabinet easier. The top of the cabinet will be sanded after the legs are reattached. So I've marked the top of the cabinet and the top of the leg and these marks will be sanded off during the final sanding. Well now you can see that I've got the table disassembled and basically broken it out into its parts. And what I like to do is just pick a place to start and finish each part and put it to the side until I get to the main body of the cabinet. And so I'm going to start with the legs. Well, before I sand the legs, I decided I wanted to put a small round over on the bottom of every leg. And for that, I'll use the router with a small round over bit. The legs are already in pretty good shape from being run through the planer. So I don't need to sand with a 60 or an 80 grit sandpaper. So what I'm going to sand with is 120 grit silicone carbide paper. And I'm going to use my orbital sander. And also the paper is C weight. So sandpaper is generally A, B, and C. A being the lightest weight paper and C being the heaviest weight paper. So if you're using an orbital sander, it's good to use uh, the C, the heavier paper. Now, as far as sanding the legs, I'm only going to sand three sides. The sides, the inside, and the front of the leg, the side that you're going to see and the side with the plugs, I'm going to sand that last after the legs are attached to the cabinet. When I'm sanding, I want to make sure that I'm flat on the surface. I don't want to roll the sander over and soften these edges up. I will lightly soften the edges up when the entire cabinet is assembled and I'll use a piece of 120 sandpaper and A weight paper to just lightly soften the edges to take that sharpness away. But it's real important that when you're sanding, just keep the palm sander nice and level right on your surface. With 
With the legs of the cabinet now sanded, I'm going to move on to the backs. I'm going to sand them the same way with 120 grit silicone carbide paper in the orbital sander. And also I want to mention, I get a couple of emails, why do I use a respirator as a dust mask? And the simple answer is, it's comfortable. I've never found the dust masks very comfortable and it just works for me. Well now I've finished sanding the drawers and I sanded the drawers to completion. So I sanded them first with the 120 in the orbital sander and then I hand sanded the drawers just easing the corners a little bit and for that I used 220 the A weight paper. So it's a lighter weight paper and again I'm not rounding it, I'm not rounding the corners over, I'm just taking the sharpness off of the edge. Well finally I'm ready to sand the main part of the cabinet and I'm going to start with 80 grit sandpaper on, this is another orbital sand sander but it's the kind with the disc on it and I'll sand the bottom, I'll sand the sides, then I'll switch to the 120 grit silicone carbide on this orbital sander and then I'll attach the legs and the very last step is to sand the top. Now that the cabinet is sanded, I've started to attach the legs and I'm making sure that I put a good amount of glue on the leg where it's going to be in contact with the cabinet and then it should just simply screw right into the holes that I've already, that they were already attached by. That's why it's important to mark the legs. And also, I'm just using a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm not using my screw gun because I want to feel the tension of the screw. That's what I want. You see all the, see all the glue squeezing out? That's a nice glue joint. And these screws are just acting like clamps. The strength isn't really from the screws as much as it is from this wide glue joint. Now while the glue is still wet, you want to get every bit of glue off of the surface. For the inside corners, these tight corners, I like to use a wet paintbrush. After I removed all of the glue, I let the legs dry and then I made a few walnut plugs and the walnut plugs are held in with five minute epoxy. And while the epoxy is setting up, I'll sand the top. If you want to know more about these plugs, I'll put a link on the screen. Again, I'm going to use the 80 grit sandpaper in my disc orbital sander to sand the top. Because the legs are maybe a 64th of an inch high, this will just cut those legs flush with the top and once I finish sanding with 80, I'm going to flip the table over, cut the plugs off, finish sand the legs, then I'll flip it back over, final sand the top with 120, then hand sand it with 220. I'm using a pull saw to cut the plugs flush with the legs. I'll cut halfway through the plugs, then I'll bring the saw to the other side and cut the rest of the way. Okay, well, that's about it. I still have to hand sand the piece of furniture and I'm going to take my time when I do that because I don't want to round over the edges. I just want to just soften the edge a little bit so it's not too sharp. Now if you'd like to see how this piece of furniture gets finished, tune in next week and that will be my project and uh, please subscribe to my channel and like me on Facebook and uh, that's about it. Thanks for tuning in.